Right, so let's have a look at the kit then. Uh, this is a Devil Forge. It's uh, from a guy in Lithuania. He makes these things. Great guy, He's great on the emails. Yeah, can't really go wrong. Great piece of kit, done well so far. Uh, they do a few different makes. This one's a 10 kilo one. They do one with sort of just wool around the inside. It's a bit cheaper, obviously a bit more lightweight. Uh, this one's, I think, insulation on the on the inside and then it's got an inch of refractory on the inner there. So that's the furnace, pretty easy. You'll see that in a minute once we get the melt going. So going over to here, quick run through the kit. We've got an old cast iron pan, that's where the dross goes and things that get skimmed, obviously just lob it in there. We've got some uh, crucibles, a couple of A6s at the back there, and then that one at the front there is an A4. A couple of old stainless steel spoons, probably not the best material, but it does me for now. Picked up three of these from, uh, was it Machine Mart, I think, 15 quid. Snapped the first one the first time I used it, filed it down, managed to get something out of it. Anyway, what else we got? I'll come back to the gloves and safety stuff later. We got some ingot moulds, that chappy there, I think it's a six kilo mould, which is a 200 ounce gold cast iron mould. These ones here, these are 85 ounce moulds. And this one, that's just a cookie mould that I nicked off the kids. Uh, you can see some safety specs there which are totally useless. We'll forget those even, we'll stick them somewhere out of the way. What else did I get? So, uh, got these, set of tongs, that's handy. Just for adding bits and bobs. Uh, that's what I use when I'm not using the spoon, then I use that to scrape dross and stuff out. I can't weld, so I had to buy one of these. And I'll, uh, I'll stick prices up and things in the description if you want. Finally, the other one is thing to lift the crucible. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all you need. You need some moulds, something to melt it, something to lift it out the furnace, and something to pour it with. Right, next thing, safety. So, a couple of ways to look at safety. This is the way I look at it. I work with my hands every day. And I need my hands, I need my body, and I need it to work. So, you know, what's the worst gonna, that's going to happen? Well, you spill molten metal, metal on your skin, and you're in a world of hurt. And honestly, I didn't want to chance it. Now, the thing is, when you're doing aluminium, oh, and there's a uh, temperature laser thing there. It reads up to 1,500 degrees. Instant, just point, and there's a temperature. So there you go, it's not particularly warm tonight, but there you go, seven and a half degrees. Right, so when you're melting aluminium, gloves. Now, obviously, different metals, different temperatures. You know, you can get away with these. These are just welding gloves. Now, you know, they're not going to offer a lot of protection. They're not going to be so great at molten metal, but the thing is, if you spill stuff on them, the key thing is you can throw them off yourself. You literally shake your hands and the gloves are gone. And that's that's the key thing. You know, you want to be able to de-garment yourself pretty quick. These ones, these are rated up to 800 degrees Celsius. I can pick up red hot ingots with these. No problem at all. Trouble is, I can barely move my fingers in them. So I can't move things around. It's quite difficult to pour with. And not only that, they're so thick, I can barely get them over my um, protective clothing. So, you know, they're good, they have their place, but I, these are more for things like melting copper, where I can't get my hand next to the crucible with these on because the radiant heat burns your hands through the gloves. So, you know, at least in your left hand only, you need a thick glove because it's next to the crucible. Next thing, mask. So you're doing brass, anything like that, anything with additional materials in it that's going to produce gas, like zinc. Uh, I don't know enough about this stuff to know what's been released. So, you know, if in doubt, if you can see it, wear a mask. If you can't see it, it's probably sensible to wear a mask anyway. I ended up buying a couple of different face shields. I bought this, I bought this one at the back first, and then I realised that once I was wearing it, 
I couldn't fit these on. So I ended up buying that one, which was cheap, and it's perfect. I can pop that on, pop these on underneath. Good stuff. But I won't really be needing that today because aluminium bronze will probably be all right. If you want more details about anything, just let me know and I'll add it to the description. Next thing, obviously, you've got a burner to preheat the moulds. This is a 50mm burner. There's a roofer's burner. It's got a flame about two and a half feet long. Right, let's get on with some aluminium bronze because uh, it's going to get late otherwise. Nice right, so one, chaps. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll see what we've got coming up later.